Hey, welcome to Sex Afflictions and Porn Addictions. I am your host, Craig Perra from www.themindfulhabit.com. I'm the founder of the Mindful Habit System, the world's number one online at home addiction program for men struggling with sex and porn addiction. The right guy, because not every program is for everybody, but for the right guy, uh, it's the best. And, and maybe that's you. So this broadcast is to help you create healthy sexuality and a great life. And today, I want to talk about five must-do actions, five things that must occur if you want to be successful long term. But I want to say a couple things before I jump into those, these five things. This is basic. This is easy. In fact, I call these five things the fundamental five. But when I teach these five things, I like to um, remind people of the expression that when I was a kid on the East Coast growing up in Rhode Island, when someone said something that was so ridiculously obvious, we responded with, Nada, which meant obviously. Obviously, that is something that you must do. That's important. Um, but here's the simple reality. It's an important lesson. It always is an important lesson, whether that's in my group, whether that's in my one-on-one. -on -one. And, and literally, every time someone slips, every time someone stumbles, one or more of these five things is missing. So this is important. It is so important to break a habit. You have to make a habit. The success, the, 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 you know, you not doing something, which is may have brought you here, you not acting out, you not watching porn, you not acting out sex, sexually, you not, um, you know, pulling up prostitution ads, you not going to strip clubs, whatever that not thing is, is the result of you doing something else to break a habit, you have to make a habit. And as anyone who struggled with this problem for any period of time knows there's no one thing. There's no one thing that oh, if I just do this one thing, I'm going to be okay. That's that that's not the case. Um, there are multiple parts of your system that must be moving forward. You must have self control. You must have an element of self awareness. You must have incorporated and embraced a belief system where failure equals opportunity. You must live your purpose. You must be moving towards something. You must be directing that sexual energy in a healthy, uh, constructive way. Because there's no universe where it's not going to be pulled in an unhealthy way. So there are multiple systems. There's no one answer that's going to solve all your problems. And one critically important aspect of that system is self-care. Is self-care. And I promise that almost every time you are off, you are low, you are down, you are moving away from success, you are not executing one of the fundamental five, one of the basic, like, come on, man, like, like here, here's what this podcast is. Um, don't expect results without taking care of the basics. Let's stop fooling ourselves. Let's stop pretending. Let's stop um, trying to trick ourselves that we're going to be successful if we're not taking care of the basics. This broadcast is about the basics. And I'm going to give them to you really, really quick. The fundamental five. This may be a, one of my shortest podcasts. Um, the fundamental five. Because it's so obvious. It's so obvious. It's so obvious. All right, here we go. The fundamental five. You must eat well. I know, I know, right? Groundbreaking, groundbreaking, miraculous. Craig, you've changed my life. I never figured that out. When you lack self-control in one area, you lack self-control in other areas. And so many of us are struggling with our relationship with food, food and sex, very similar. Both of them are doing something for us. Both of them are meeting a needs. Both of them are comfort. So you get what you put in. You, you, you got to put good stuff in your body. You got to take care of it. You got to be in a place where you worship that temple. One body, 
One body, one life, one body, one life. And, 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 and what are you putting in it? Are you poisoning your body with what you put in your mouth? Are you also poisoning what you put in your mind, in your spirit, in your heart, in your eyes, in terms of what you're watching or what you're doing? So eating, very, very, very important. Groundbreaking, I know, right? Revolutionary. This is going to change the world. It will if everyone did it. Um, and I wouldn't have to say it and teach it over and over again and remind myself of it over and over again. Sleep. Sleep. How are you going to create sustainability in your life if you're not sleeping? You don't sleep for long enough periods of time. You literally go insane. It takes years off your life. And that's a question that I like. I encourage people to ask themselves. Look at your current state. Look at your current situation and say, is this sustainable? And, and, and so many times the answer is, is no. So sleep is so ridiculously important. And, and listen, I get it. Maybe you struggle with it. Maybe you've got more problems than someone else. There's always something that you can do to make it better. There's a mindset that you can control what you can't control, you can't control what you can't control, and you're smart enough to know the business, the, the difference. That's the basic of the serenity prayer, which you may have heard, an incredibly important piece of wisdom. Here's the next one. The next one is, 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 is uh, it illustrates my brilliness. brilliantness. <laughs> um, and I love telling this story. I have a client, and, and you may be listening to this podcast. We'll call him Joe from Long Island. He talks like me, like literally the scene out of a um, uh, uh, Goodfellas movie, right? And um, so I'm teaching him about the fundamental five, eating, sleeping. The next one, this is hydration. You must hydrate. I know, I know, right? Wild, mind-blowing stuff. You must hydrate. And so, uh, so Joe learns this lesson. And Joe is one of the men who finds that hydration happens to be their keystone habit. Let me tell you what a keystone habit is. A keystone habit is a habit that when performed increases the chances that other habits will be performed. So a negative keystone habit is obviously pornography. When you're compulsively watching porn, you're not executing, you're not delivering, you're not living up to your potential. You're not taking care of the basics in terms of what you need to do in your life if you're struggling with compulsive sexual behavior. That's a negative keystone habit. A positive keystone habit is exercise. Because when you exercise, people tend to hydrate a little bit better. People tend to eat a little bit better. People tend to sleep a little bit better. So for Joe, Joe realized that when he paid attention to him hydrating, it was a super keystone habit. There was something about that act of prioritizing himself. His mouth is parched, aha, it is time to hydrate. And there's that voice always in his head which says, no, do it later. You don't have to do it. And you may be familiar with that voice. Don't worry about it, forget about it, do it later, get back to work, do what you gotta do, dig in, 50,000 other things to do, don't hydrate, come on. There was something about that act of hydration where it, be, it was a super keystone habit, meaning when he hydrated, everything else fell into place. For some men, it's like flossing, right? That simple act making, you may have heard the, the YouTube speech, the general who gives the speech about make your bed every morning, accomplish something. Doing that one thing creates a culture of success in your life. And this was a guy who was smart, but he did not take the time to hydrate the organism that was executing on all the things that were important to him. He wasn't taking the time to hydrate. His pee was really, really, really yellow. And he'd go hours and hours and hours without hydrating. So he'd send me pictures of his water bottle. And about every other time we talked, he'd say, Craig, oh my God, this is a genius. How did you come up with this? I never would have imagined, like, eat better. Whoa. 
Wow, 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 wow. Um, that was worth every penny. Um, I, uh, sleep better. Oh, where did you come up with that? You, you are great. Uh, and hydrating. Wow, 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 wow. You are a genius. So he would bust my chops. I love it. I love it every time he did. I love sharing this story because there is something beautiful and simple in the basics. And so many of you are listening to this podcast and so many partners are listening to this podcast and they're struggling and you're struggling and you're not taking care of the basics. So that's the whole point of, or a point of this podcast is to ask yourself this question, what kind of success can you expect if you're not taking care of the basics? So we've got the three biggies. Um, we got three biggies. There's still two more biggies coming. Eating, sleeping. I know, right? Um, hydrating, hydrating. Joe, thank you for those pictures uh, of your water bottle. And see, the, the water bottle became a talisman, um, a symbol, a statue, a representative of self-care, of self-care rooted in self-love. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. That's the key, self-care, because I've worked with a triathlete, for example. And well, come on, He's gonna, he should be teaching me on self-care. But it was self-care was not rooted in self-love. So that water bottle was a talisman for love for self. Telling Joe that, it's so, that he needs to prioritize himself if he wants to be successful. He must honor the needs of the mind, the body, and the spirit if he wants to be successful. Eating, sleeping, drinking, exercise. I know, right? Like you, you where, where, where'd that come from? Where'd that brilliant idea come from? Um, exercise, like, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. What kind of success can you expect if you're not taking care of the body? That's, this is the Nada chapter of the program, you know? It's, and and it, it took me so long to realize that. It, 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 I had, I had, you know, I, was, I had this, this was, rela you know, uh, physical health was over here, mental health was over here, my addiction stuff was over here. Put them all right here. Put them all here, right smack dab in the center. They are all related, they are all connected. You must. You must, you must exercise. And let's face it, brothers, some of us are dealing with acute mental health issues. One doctor said I had bipolar. Two other doctors said I did not. Many doctors have said I've been clinically depressed. I have anxiety. I've had ADD diagnosis. I used to take Ritalin. I don't take any pills anymore. I got issues. I got issues. And, and how am I going to deal with those issues if I am not honoring, respecting, and loving my body? Not just the actions that equal loving my body, the belief systems that they are important. I am important. You are important. You are worthy and you deserve to put yourself first so you can be there for your family. So you can be there for your partner. You can be there for your children. There is a belief system rooted in self-love. So it's not just eat, sleep, drink, exercise. It's the habits around executing in those areas. And it is the underlying belief systems that prop those habits and actions up. Why you do it. Why you do it. And when you're out of control with this behavior, when that powerful evolutionary energy, your sexual energy is being directed at an unhealthy, destructive place and isn't going towards your relationship, isn't moving you towards success, how else are you going to channel and direct and transmute that powerful sexual energy that we have in us as men if we don't exercise? So... Let's just like ignore any reality that does not have you honoring, respecting, 
and prioritizing your mind, your body, and your spirit. There is no recovery without exercise. There is no long-term sustainable results without exercise. Impossible. Impossible. Last but not least is mindfulness. Okay, mindfulness is a little bit of a curveball. Um, you know, the name of my business is The Mindful Habit. It's in the title because it is so, so, so important. And, and my, when, I, when I say mindfulness, there's a couple of different types of mindfulness that I'm talking about. And I just want to address um, some basic mindfulness concepts and give you um, a simple, simple exercise to help you cultivate. But here's the deal with mindfulness. You got to train your brain. You know the thoughts that you're having. You know the triggers that you're experiencing. You know where your mind goes that make you feel ashamed, that make you feel disgusting, that are completely inconsistent with the man that you want to be. You got to counterbalance that. My addiction to my thoughts brought me to my knees to a place where I wanted to check out, put me out of my misery, <gasps> snorted a big pile of blats, bat salts, a synthetic chemical, hoping I'd have a heart attack. I got all these pains, all these traumas, all these family of origin issues, all this unhealthy programming around my sexual um, history, being touched by an older neighborhood boy. You have to train your brain, and that's what mindfulness is. So download the app Headspace. Download the app Calm. Do your own research. Maybe find, if you're a spiritual, God-fearing man, maybe there's some spiritual guided visualizations and meditations that inspire you and lift you up. And just sit in silence and focus on your breathing. Whenever you read a study or an article that says mindfulness reduces the stress level cortisol, mindfulness increases well-being, mindfulness reduces depression, reduces anxiety, what they're talking about is people training their minds, just like you dedicate time to exercise, to meditating. Closing your eyes, focusing on your breath, 10 minutes a day. The exercise that I invite you to do is one minute a day. One minute, count your breath. See how high you can get before you lose track. Breathe in, breathe out, one. Breathe in, breathe out, two. Breathe in, breathe out, three. Three mindful breaths. And what you will find is that you can barely make it to five. Your mind is bouncing all over the place. That is the beast that must be tamed, and that is what mindfulness does. So I say this to you in the fiber of my being, in the depth of my truth, that you will not experience long-term sustainable results without practicing mindfulness. I can't imagine, I can't imagine how you can proactively manage those thoughts long-term in any consistent way, in any consistent way without counterbalancing the programming your uh, traumas your pain your suffering your shame the mind is so powerful it literally frames our reality frames our reality we attach to those negative thoughts that we have and we act in accordance with that attachment mindfulness is hold up wait a minute, we don't have to grab that negative thought. We don't have to take that sexualizing, objectifying negative thought, run with it and hide in secret and take that with us. Mindfulness doesn't reduce the thoughts, although over time it has that ability. Mindfulness changes your relationship with the thoughts because, brother, you must assume, you must assume that your sexual energy will be pulled in an unhealthy direction. You must assume that you are going to struggle, that you are going to feel like a piece of shit again. 
There's going to be no situation in your life where you're going to make a mistake, not feel good, make another mistake, and, and feel like you're at that low point where those weak and wounded parts of you aren't going to wake up. Yes, they are. But you don't have to take action on those thoughts. You don't have to attach to those thoughts that are driving you to numb, cope, and escape as you have been doing likely in some form or another since you were a child. So mindfulness, mindfulness, mindfulness. Think mindfulness mandatory. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. There's no long-term success. There's no proactively managing the monkey mind without you cultivating a mindfulness practice. And let me tell you, it is awesome. It is awesome not reacting to every time the wind blows, not reacting to every time you're being triggered to get angry or to get upset, to, to, to have that energy pulled in an unhealthy direction. It is control, it is autonomy, it is power, and it is strength. You must practice mindfulness. So let me review the obvious, um, the duh, uh, fundamental five things you must do if you want to be successful long term. You must eat well. You must sleep well. You must hydrate. You must exercise. And you must practice mindfulness. Rigorous self-care rooted in self-love is a pillar upon which all long term success rests. I want to thank you very much for listening. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. If you want more information about me, visit www.themindfulhabit.com. I have a one hour free training entitled the four transformational shifts that you must make if you want to be successful. And in that video, you will learn my philosophy, why I think the way I do, why I structured my program the way I do, and why I get the results uh, that I do. Um, so check out that free training. You can sign up for that free training at the homepage, um, www.themindfulhabit.com. And I am offering a discount um, on my self-study program. So I have um, a self-study program. It's a 12-week intensive training, literally the same workbook that my one-on-one -on -one clients get, the same exercises that my one-on-one -on -one clients get. This is a self-study program for you to do on your own at your own pace. Um, the price normally is $499, and we are reducing the price 80% to $99. The um, coupon code is coronavirus, all one word. Use the coupon code coronavirus, all one word, to get 80% off my self-study program. If you're looking to get, a get this information delivered to you in a structured way, um, in the same path that I'm guiding my one-on-one -on -one clients on and my clients in the group coaching program. So check it out. Check out the self-study program on the website. Coronavirus is the coupon code. That will get you 80%. Thank you so much for listening. It is truly an honor and a privilege to support you on your journey. May you feed the right wolf inside you and embrace your power of choice. See you next time. Bye.